Recently, we've been making a series of videos about simplifying and speeding up the hand sharpening process, because the faster and easier it is, the less likely you are to work with dull tools, and the less work it will be each time you do sharpen. I'll link to those videos in the description below this one so you can take advantage of those resources. We've discussed maintaining a razor sharp edge by regular stropping, using just one or two grits of stones when you have to use stones, and in a couple days we'll talk about how occasional grinding can actually speed up the process as well. We'll also soon be releasing a video about freehand sharpening because nothing will speed up the process more than eliminating the jig. But I'm also a realist. I know that many of you are never going to take up freehand sharpening because you're either too intimidated to try or you sharpen so occasionally that you just can't maintain the skills necessary to hold an angle freehand. For you, a jig is a must. So today we'll discuss ways to make setting up your jig as fast and convenient as possible so the whole sharpening process will still be just a brief distraction rather than a dreaded chore. First, let's talk about the jigs themselves. I've used a lot of them over the years. They all work to different degrees, but some are less consistent than others, and consistency is the key. In fact, it's the whole point of a jig. If you can achieve and maintain the exact same bevel angle every single time, you'll only have to remove just a tiny amount of steel from your tool to restore the edge. Let's take a look at these Eclipse style jigs as an example. These are inexpensive, and I think they're a good choice if you're on a budget, but they suffer from the effects of poor machining. When you tighten the jig on a plane iron, the pressure causes the jaws to tilt inward. That creates a hump in the center that allows your plane iron to tilt slightly from one side to the other. You may not notice it, but even a slight shift in the iron will lead to inconsistent setups and more time at the stone. The solution is to file these jaws so they slope inward and only the outer edges hold the plane iron. You may also wish to file the notches on the inside of the jaws. These are for holding the edges of a chisel, but they aren't large enough to consistently hold a thick chisel blade. Again, a little work with the file will make these larger, and that'll go a long way. I'll put a link to a video about making these modifications below, as well as a link to the jig itself if you're looking for an inexpensive option. Of course, another solution is to invest in a premium jig that will work flawlessly. And there are a handful of those on the market. Lately, I've become very fond of the Bridge City Tools Honing Guide. Everything Bridge City Tools makes is top-notch, so it's no surprise the jig holds the tool consistently every time. For one thing, it doesn't pinch on the sides of the tool, so that automatically eliminates some of the issues that other jigs suffer from. It also makes it possible to clamp in specialty tools, like mortising chisels. There's a movable fence that keeps your tool straight, and I especially like the innovative micro adjuster, which allows you to change your bevel angle by very small amounts. There are, of course, other jigs out there, but I think these two represent both an inexpensive entry-level option that will work well with some modifications and a premium option that's a little more versatile and will work well right out of the box. Once you've decided on your jig, you have to learn to set it up quickly and consistently. If you have to spend 10 minutes fiddling with it, you're going to put it off and we don't want that. One of the best ways to set up any honing jig is with another jig. This is a honing board, which you can easily make yourself. It holds your stones securely so they don't slide around, and you can use the stops to quickly set the distance your tool protrudes from your honing jig, which is how the bevel angle is determined. I made mine large enough to hold a few stones and strops, but this is overkill. As we discussed in a previous video, one stone and one strop may be all you need. But I have the extra stones, so I figured why not put them on there. Make your board to fit the stones you use. In fact, make it two or three inches wider on each side because that'll help keep the mess off your bench. I made mine from three quarter inch plywood with a couple coats of polyurethane to protect it from moisture. I've seen others put a piece of countertop laminate on theirs. I've also seen it made from melamine. Whatever you do, you just want to protect it from the water and the oil that you use on your stones. The location of the stops depends on your jig. But it's pretty easy to figure them out if you have one of these protractors. If you don't have one, I'll link to an inexpensive source below this video. They're very useful for all sorts of things. To find your angle, place the head of the protractor on the underside of your platform and across the back of your plane iron while it's mounted in the jig. This will tell you the angle your iron is set at. Adjust the distance the iron protrudes from the jig until your protractor reads at the angle you're looking for. 
Then place the body of the jig against the edge of the platform and attach a stop against the edge of the iron. If you want more stops for other angles, just repeat the process. I put several stops on mine for different angles because I figured why not, but I don't use them all. If you want to know about bevel angles, I'll link to another video we made on that subject below. If you sharpen with sandpaper on plate glass or you don't want to attach your stones to this jig, you can just make something smaller with the stops alone. These make setting up your jig fast and consistently repeatable, which again is key to efficient sharpening because precise setup reduces the amount of steel you have to remove to refresh an edge. Speaking of removing less material, you can speed up the sharpening process even more by creating what's called a micro bevel. This means tilting your tool slightly upward so you're not rubbing the whole bevel on the stone, but rather just the portion nearest the cutting edge where a little work goes a long way. This creates a micro bevel that's a couple degrees steeper than your primary bevel, and it can be achieved by slipping an eighth inch thick shim between your stop and the edge of the plain iron when you're setting up your honing jig. Eventually, that fine micro bevel will become wider and its benefits will be reduced. When that happens, you should restore the full primary bevel with a coarse stone and no shim or with a grinder. That will require some extra work, but the effort saved during the several sharpenings in between regrinding makes it well worth it. Now that you've got the setup down, there's not much of a learning curve for using your honing jig. Keep your fingers down near the cutting edge and try to apply even pressure. It doesn't take a lot of pressure, especially if you're using a diamond stone. And excessive pressure may lead to uneven sharpening anyway. Just keep things flat and even and you'll be fine. The exception is toward the end of the sharpening process when you're honing a plain iron. Then you may want to apply extra pressure on one corner than the other to slightly taper those corners back so they won't dig into your wood later. Sharpening is a fundamental skill, but it's not complicated. I hope this video and other resources linked below helps you improve your technique so you can do it quickly and get back to woodworking. At first glance, you may be taken aback by the tool's stunning form or its exceptional heirloom quality, but the most common phrase heard in the workshops of Bridge City tool users across the world is, huh, why didn't I think of that? Clever ideas, innovative features, uncompromising quality. Visit bridgecitytools.com today to see for yourself. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.